Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Long Walk Talks. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am joined today by my two co-hosts, Stan Wilson Lee. Hello. And Chris Wilson Barnes. <laughs> Dave, you think of these topics just to get people mad at us, don't you? No, not always. Now you say. Well, before we dive into the topic, I don't know if I've brought this up on here before, but listeners, uh, it's that magical time of year. It's summer in South Carolina. It's we're blaz- melting. We're melting. It's about to be the dog days. And uh, therefore, the air conditioning is on in my office. So if you hear uh, some buzzing in the background, a little more background noise, I apologize. But we need it to live, and I'm not sorry. So today, we are going to be discussing controversial opinions. We're taking a break away from our Quentin Tarantino discussion uh, to talk about opinions that we have that run contrary to popular opinion. And uh, so I picked three and I asked each of these guys to pick three. And uh, this is another one of those episodes that could be 30 minutes or it could be three hours. We're going to find out. I would ask if I don't have to go first today, if Chris could go start first. That's very well, kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> Stan, what are you worried about? You kept going on and on about how you don't have I don't have three. You don't have you I don't, don't have, have contra- any. You don't have any controversial opinions. I'm, I'm totally, I would argue that all of your opinions totally are controversial opinions. Open to everyone and everything. <laughs> that's that not right what, there. That's not what we're talking about. All right, Chris, well how about you start us off with all your right. with what is a controversial opinion that you have? I'll start with an easy lob. Um I think award shows should be done away with in general. I can agree with that. Entirely. Yeah, yeah I can get behind I'm that. just beyond tired of them, and I don't want them anymore. Hmm. I don't think they're necessary at all. I agree, actually. Stan, how do you feel about that? You look... Uh... Um, I'm indifferent. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I, I accept and I and I respect the premise of why there are award shows and and it is a blast watching. Yeah, you know, um, I'm not saying the spectacle. Neil Patrick Harris doing his you know opening openings to the Tony Awards and stuff like that. Right. And but and then and then there's certain stuff and, and some years are better than others. Mm-hmm. You know where okay that movie's finally being recognized or you know or. That, that actor is finally that, being recognized. That actor is yeah. being recognized. Um, and like this past Oscars, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll talk about this later, is that, you know, it's like I really was looking forward to um, Brad Pitt winning an Oscar finally for for uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and, and I wanted Once Upon a Time because that's my favorite film and of last year and of last – 20 years um to win and so the 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 amount of excitement of last year's oscars Mm -hmm. you know and 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 the people that were nominated and there was people nominated that we never thought would be nominated or you know and then you know the irishman was in there and you know and which could be part of our controversial topics of discussion oh never mind um, <laughs> no, not mine but, either. But but the idea that of of should have been there, should have not been there, you know, and yeah. and who was nominated from it, and who should have been nominated. For it. But so it's like there is an indifference, um, and I I'm agree. It's probably shouldn't. It definitely shouldn't be as important mm-hmm. as it is. But if you happen to be a nominee, well, you of course, well, probably yeah. <laughs> But it boiled down to it. me. I just realized that. It would. Ha- I. I would. I. I. It would. I would have to really search my mind to think about the last time anything, whether it won an Oscar, a Tony, a Grammy, any or People's Choice Award, Teen Choice Award, MTV Movie Award, any of those, made a difference to me as to whether or not I was going to watch something or listen to it or partake in it. Or a video, or the video game awards, whatever they are. Yeah. It doesn't. I realize it really. I'm glad they get these things get recognition for whatever they've done. That's cool. But man, it does not mean anything to me. Yeah. And more often than not, they're just popularity contests. Yeah. 
That's why makeup Oscars happen. It's like <laughs> you mean, as in giving it to somebody after when they deserve it, not specifically like Oscars for makeup design and application, right? right? Okay, yeah, yeah. The, no, a I'm whole sorry. section sorry. of our fan base is going to be like that's. <laughs> I should be clear. I mean, like when they they give it to someone some year when it should have been someone when it should have been right. Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant yeah, got it. I yeah, whatever. He, yeah, he has one now. I'm sure it's fulfilled his life completely. All right. Stan, do you want to go second or do you want to go third? Oh, oh, we're doing one at a time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go third. Have you then. been on this show before? <laughs> I'll, I'll go first third. First time? I'll go third. <laughs> okay. So Very charitable of you to <laughs> let him keep cowarding out. I know. We're going to get to the end of the episode and realize you haven't given us anything yet. Oh, I got, I got a couple. All right. Now, my controversial opinion. Michael Bay is actually a good filmmaker, you guys. <gasps> I he gets nah. a lot of shit on the internet and um, you know I, in the I, press, but I so many people you know want to decry the fact that Michael Bay makes popcorn films. Well, well I think I Michael mean, Bay should be celebrated for making popcorn films because yeah, he's good at it. Sure, I, I think yeah, he's the go-to guy for when you want to make your multi-million dollar or hundred million dollar franchise movies. Right, it's and like, I don't think at any point he's ever set out to make an Oscar winner. I no. think he sets out to make movies in which things explode and people look oily and sexy and And he's the uh, go-to guy because in a technical sense he's got it locked down yeah his his style is impeccable well i i I can't agree with that but um and and i think as a producer um the people he hires to because he's the the make basically the producer the renaissance of you know horror film remakes and stuff like that so um so he's at least putting people together to do decent versions, arguably, of, arguably, <laughs> of, yeah, of stuff that we we love and that we can love again in a different format. Um, but I'm gonna always hate Pearl Harbor, <laughs> um, and some of the. Transformers films are better than others. There's no uh, denying the fact that Transformers Revenge of the Fallen <laughs> is one of the worst movies oh of all my time. God. But isn't he responsible for like The Rock and stuff like that? Um, that's Or uh, is that um, I don't think I, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer. That's yeah, that's Bruckheimer. Um, but they're kind of the same people, aren't they? <laughs> they're uh, they're BFFs. So they're, yeah, I know Bruckheimer produced a lot of Bay films and um, I think vice versa. Is Michael Bay the uh, um, Martin Lawrence, uh, Will Smith, Will Bad Smith. Boys, Bad Boys. He's yes. Bad Boys, right? Yes, he so, is. So, like the first Bad Boys is a great, great action film. I haven't seen um, the third one yet, but the first two are fantastic action films. Uh, and and that qualifier is necessary. They're fantastic action comedies. Yeah, exactly. Are, are exactly. they good films? <laughs> <laughs> Probably um, not. And his rated R stuff is a lot, lot better and put together and done better than his pg-13 oh, he, oh wait so. he directed the rock he did do the rock yeah which is that one was of my the year after bad boys which yeah. is one of my favorite again one of one of my favorite times with action films and i and i think that's a great movie it's weird to say but um, i think my favorite michael bay thing is the infamous aaron burr got milk commercial he directed that really yes i had no idea not I, why did i say infamous it's famous it's just it's there's nothing wrong with it <laughs> Well, aren't infamous and famous just basically the same thing? No, <laughs> and and I'm not sure, David, if that's a controversial statement because Armageddon. I don't know. Ask may, the he, internet. M- most folks go to Michael Bay films, pay a lot of money to go see Michael Bay films, and they're huge hits. And so it's like he's making money. Well, like me- I said, with the Transformers films, I've never paid for Transformer films. I've seen all of them <laughs> on streaming or whatever. Unfortunately, so like, I have paid to see every Transformers um, film. Some of them more, were more worth it than others. And and I would say, was he in, was he involved? He is producer of Bumblebee, right? I don't even Did, know if that's true. Well, he I is think. executive producer for Untitled Transformers projects set to come out in twenty two. <laughs> of but, course, he is. But I just I just watched at your place, David. Uh, Bumblebee. Bumblebee, and which I enjoyed way more than I thought, and so the and you said it was a soft reboot of yep. the of the franchise, and it's like 
Okay, if that if that's where it's going. Well, let me amend my earlier statement. Michael Bay is a good filmmaker is a controversial opinion among the of kind filmmakers? of filmmakers. Of, of, yes, of filmmakers <laughs> of um, the industry that we aso- uh, most closely associate ourselves with. Ask any ask most other filmmakers and directors, and they'll try to tell you that Michael Bay is trash. He is there with Brett Ratner for me. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. Really. Um, Oh, see, because no. early Brat Ratner because could get away with some stuff. He could, but he but still no, wasn't very good at it. Bay was a uh, producer on A Quiet Place. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. He was involved, and well, he well to counterbalance that, he's also been a producer on all the Purge movies. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the Purge films, but <laughs> I have heard good things. And he's a producer for A Quiet Place Part Two. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, he's. He, I, I guess were, he's a buddy of. And you were right about the horror stuff because yeah, he's he's he was a producer for well Pearl Harbor. I count that. <laughs> yeah, he runs Platinum Dunes. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. T- yeah. The, the Texas Chainsaw remake, Amityville Horror remake, mm-hmm. and I want to say the, the Texas Nightmare Chainsaw. on Elm Street. Yeah, I think so. And Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Which I guess could be one of my controversies mm-hmm. because I I enjoy the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. It wasn't bad. I, wa- I We saw it together, and then I tried watching it again like a couple of years later, and it did not hold up as well. I think it may have had something to do with seeing it in the theater. But anyway, that's uh, those are my thoughts on Michael Bay, which mm-hmm. sets up my next one that we'll get to in a, in a little bit. So, Stan, it's finally your turn. Give us a controversial opinion. Dawson's Creek is one of the greatest things ever, and it set up <clears throat> the style of... <clears throat> serialized um, story shows that we enjoy now. It, if it wasn't for Dawson's Creek, I I would have to say there's no Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I say there's no um, there's there's no Stranger Things. There's no um, You realize that uh, Buffy the B- Vampire Slayer Buffy predated Dawson's Creek by like a decade. I, they're, they're contemporaries at Worse. The phones come out. Chris and I both <laughs> reach for our phones. Well, now I gotta know. Uh, right? Did, would it, is it safe to say it's it? It, it ran from ninety eight to two thousand three. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was, was like mid nineties to. Was it? I, I feel like the series was around. That okay, time. so then Buffy set up a lot of stuff, but was but, set up or brought or, or brought back? I mean, I'm, I'm okay. All right. Yeah. So they were contemporaries. I'll give you that. Buffy was 97 to 2002. Okay. It still predates, um, uh, but, 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 but definitely for the teen drama. Yes. The teen drama and the st- stylization, you know, because, you know, we get Gotham later, we get, um, which is not necessarily teen drama, but, uh, <laughs> sty- stylized wise, it, it has a lot of the, um, uh, pathos of what Dawson's Creek set up in back in the day, and and character wise, it's a it's one of those. And I'm gonna it's like we can talk about stuff like Dallas and Falcon's Crest and stuff like that being you know about serialized relationships and how they progress over years and years and years. But Chris brought it up the idea of what we see as contemporary um, uh, teen drama is really hard but but the, but let's say teen drama the, the the pathos and the ethos and the eros that comes out of that idea. because it kind of so you get Veronica Mars comes yeah out it of kind that. of helped herald that that uh, that kind of like teen drama explosion quality yeah teen, teen quality, drama quality is, teen and drama, so, sure. you know you got writers yeah, I mean Kevin Williamson <clears throat> yeah. started on it, so it's like, and then he goes on to scream, you know. So it's like, uh, and, and you get OC out of that. You get. I was uh, just about to ask oh, your Lord. opinions on the OC. Uh, one Tree Hill, uh-huh. uh, which One Tree Hill is one of my favorite shows out of that. I I, I didn't watch much of OC, but turns out Adam Brody's out of at OC, and and he's in Ready or Not, which I just saw re- recently, and he's brilliant in that. So it's like the idea of starting points for young actors uh i mean because because dawson's creek gave us what's her face um uh maryland my week with maryland uh i'm just gonna let you flounder heath ledger's ex um i don't remember no i'm sorry (laughs) not michelle monaghan but uh um, Hold on, let me just Google the cast of Dawson's Creek. Um, Full disclosure, I've never seen an episode of the show. Um, and of course, <clears throat> you get James Vanderbeek out of it, and you get um, Katie Holmes. Yeah, Katie Holmes. Um, 
Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. We get Michelle Williams from Dawson's Creek. We get, and we did get Katie Holmes from Dawson's Creek. And yeah, she's done a couple say, things. Um, but in the sense of careers that have launched from Dawson's Creek, uh, Michelle Williams is probably the biggest, if you think, because she's the Oscar nominated one. Um, well, don't forget about Chad Michael Murray. Chad Michael Murray. But he, <laughs> or Jensen Ackles. But, but see, both of them were, and then they went on and did their stuff. You know, uh, Chad Michael Murray ended up in. Uh, uh, Correct. One Tree Hill. Uh, Jensen Ackles became Supernatural. You know, so it's like... Uh, he and, became Supernatural? <laughs> no, he's in Supernatural. He's in Supernatural. And so he's like, you get... From Dawson's Creek, you get Supernatural. You get One Tree Hill. You get... And then you get Stranger Things out of that. I'm going to say there's a build-up to Stranger Things, to Dark, to all, all these stuff that were where it, it's okay to explore w- how young folks have to mitigate the circumstances of their lives to to continue on because a lot of it is about okay can i can i surpass this obstacle to continue my life and i like to imagine that you have the world's weirdest push pin and red string cork board like conspiracy theory wall in your home because i think you're the only person i know who will find a way to connect dawson's creek to stranger things no, I can see like the to the OC and to um, uh, One Tree Hill. The only difference is that you know, Stranger Things also because if you look at, um, oh God, uh, mm-hmm. your character, uh, that My you character? that you that you played when we did the Stranger Things, Steve, 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 <laughs> and uh, uh, Uma's and Ethan's daughter in that show, Maya Hawk, Maya, Maya Hawk. Um, is this going to be the struggle? Is this the is, podcast now? Like you go to name somebody, and <laughs> me and Chris have to. How old am I? What do you mean I'm now? <laughs> That's a good point. It just seems especially prevalent. Well, you, see, it's because we, we've done too many Tarantino episodes where he I'm hasn't an had to struggle. Aged person. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a right, man of a certain age. We're being ageist. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, but yes, uh, Dawson's Creek for me, uh, probably, and also I have to say. Because when I was over the other day, um, I was telling you how I'm having all these inexplicable moments of where something that's just a tad heart string pulling, I just blah and and just missed up like crazy. That's Dawson's Creek's fault. You You know, so the idea that I, as an adult white male, was turned on to my feelings by Dawson's Creek. <laughs> I'm so glad you said to my feelings. <laughs> that I became one with my emotional content by being a fan of Dawson's Dawson's Creek, Creek, so. Creek was your awakening. It was. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> well let's let's not forget that Dawson's Creek also uh Gave us the marvelous trope that is Dawson casting. Well, yeah, where there's people that too. Or people, or a show runs for so long, and people are aged, aged so much. Yeah, to be fair, that like, that's that's the trope namer. But you can go back as far as oh. Greece and look at Rizzo oh, sure, and see yeah. that. Oh um, God, Greece is terrible. Oh with yeah, it. those Stalker those, Channing was like 35 playing. <laughs> those 30 year olds are supposed to be high schoolers. Yeah, they didn't even really try to hide it on a lot of them. Um. <laughs> Chris, like how about me. you hit us with a second one? A second one. All right. Uh, kind of uh, surprisingly, the the award show one came last to me. This one was my first thought, uh, and there is more. There is more to it than what I'm about to open with. Um, I don't care about who directs a movie, mm-hmm. and I say that in a specific way, and not just like anybody direct anything. I say that it doesn't influence me. Uh, in terms of if, if a movie's good and I like it, then yeah, sure, I'll want to find out who directed it because directing everything came together and it made a good movie. Um, but I really, I don't make a point, but I just kind of actively don't follow directors. Like we've, we're we're going through all of Tarantino's stuff. If I saw, if I if I went in blind to any of his stuff, there's a fair chance I'd probably like it more than I do. Uh, because, and it's going to sound bad when you, when, when I, when I start following like any actor or director too closely, it's like, now I have expectations Mm -hmm. for good or for bad that 
I I, I now have. I want to I want to go into every movie that I see I pay for. It's like I don't go into want to hate on something or or fanboy over it. I want to like what I'm watching. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> excuse me. Dire- when I when I'm when I'm thinking about a director going in, well then I I think for good or for ill. It's like you can you can say it's like it's either I'm going to, if I say I love this director too much, then I might start overlooking things that I genuinely didn't like. Or I, or I might be too harsh if I, it's like, because with Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan, everyone has an expectation of what you go in to see a Shyamalan movie. And some of his stuff at this point has been better received than, than other stuff. But you still go in with an expectation of like, here's his style, here's here's what you are to expect from him, and I don't I don't like thinking about that until after, until after I've seen a movie and I want to talk about what I liked and what I didn't. Because if I say I didn't like a movie, then I have then I have time to think. It's not maybe it's not just directing, maybe it's just anything else that didn't congeal properly together. I so I just I don't like I don't. And I, 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 I understand people who do, who, like you guys, who you, you have certain directors you love or don't like and enjoy for, for all their merits or their flaws. I just, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. All right. We can put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we Dogs has all these t-shirts, ide- t-shirt ideas that he wants for uh, this is a work. Chris doesn't care is the official long walk talks t-shirt now it's just well it's just like it's like there are movies i love <clears throat> that i don't know off the top of my head who directed it mm-hmm. and i directors I, notwithstanding directors you know, yeah it's like, yeah basically there i mean there's some i do and it's and it, it's incidental but it's just like it's a uh it's a tricky subject it is it um, is because I, I i know a good director is very critical yeah for a movie to succeed well, I mean, no and, amount of. But sh- you do though. Um, if you see a series of films mm-hmm. done, like uh, the Lord, uh, Lego movies, guys and stuff, yeah. Miller and Lord, Miller yeah. and Lord, um, you have come to expect an, an, that if expect, they're producing it, and, yeah, I expect that you expect it to be good, and that you, um, and that's, and then that they they go and do uh, Twenty One Jump Street, mm-hmm. and so it's like you, and, and this, that's the thing is like I I. I there is it's, it's kind of selfish because yes when I go into something that they've produced it's like I have an expectation and and part of now part of that is I hope this isn't the one that lets me down <laughs> they haven't yet no they haven't going all the way back to Clone High uh, they did Clone High they did I Clone High and it's it. coming back they're rebooting it I feel like uh, what Stan said about um, director notwithstanding is important mm-hmm. uh, because as much of a uh, piece of shit as he is, um, Roman Polanski, mm-hmm. uh, Katie and I still watch um, Rosemary's Baby like once a year. So, yeah, uh, I'm kind of on both sides of that fence because I definitely do have directors that I follow. And then I have director. I have there are films where I just don't care who Man. directed it. I think of it like this, actually. Um in an animated movie, a lot of times when they when when they cast them, they go for stunt casting because they know names will bring in right. money. But Chris I honestly, Pratt. <laughs> say what? Chris Pratt. Yeah, uh, yeah. But honestly, a lot of the best movies are ones where it's like seasoned voice actors who aren't necessarily names, but they've done it for decades and they know what they're doing and they produce some of the, they produce better work. So even if you don't know them off the top of your head, they've voiced a lot of a lot of stuff you know, and it's great. Nice. I think a I think a name br- I think ultimately brings, uh, well, I mean expectations, right? <laughs> and and possibly it's, unwanted. It's expect- yeah. It's you, it's going to color your perception like you said, in some way. Like you said, I hope it doesn't let me down this yeah, time. You know, yeah, it's like, exactly. And that that's kind of a that's kind of a horrible expectation to go into a movie with. Is it's, like it's I hope selfish, this isn't yeah. the one that kills my. I hope this lives up to the rest of their yeah, film yeah. It, it yeah. is It's selfish. It's like I say with Tarantino stuff, I, I go in with a colored perception, which is why Django pleasantly surprised me. Mm-hmm. It was like part of, part of me going into there was like, well, it's, I'm going to suffer through this, I guess. And then I was turned around. It's just like, 
it, it works both ways. It's a double edged sword yeah. for me. Agreed. Well, on a very similar note and yes. related to my first controversial opinion, here's my second one. Sam Raimi is not a good filmmaker. <laughs> And that one is probably going to get me some shit from our listeners and from, you know, film lovers and filmmakers. But he is just not a good director. Um, You look at the movies that are most closely associated with him and you start with the Evil Dead series. Nobody likes the Evil Dead because they're good films. No one talks. Bruce Campbell. It's Bruce Campbell. It's the absurdity of them. Uh, it's how gory they are. It's how ridiculous and they are. And I think are. people also really respect just how gorilla and hard scrabble they were. Yeah, putting those right. movies together. Yeah, that is what they love about the film. No one has, I think, ever written a critical dissertation on the merits of the Evil Dead films. What about Drag Me to Hell? <laughs> he, he hates. Well, we're going. <laughs> we're know. going in order. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, well, by Man? order, I've never actually seen any of the Dark Man films. There's you, only one, right? No, there's no, like there, but four. he only did one. He did the first one. Yeah, yeah he, he did the first one. Dark Man. Sorry for the people Dark at Man. home who are listening to this. You did not see the visible consternation on Dave's face. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, all right. What else is uh, Sam Raimi most closely associated with after that? The Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Yes. yes, he is. Which I maintain 19 years later, the only reason those films were so beloved when they came out is because at that time we didn't have Marvel studios exactly. at that point in time in 2001, what did we have? We had we blade. Had just, we had just and, gotten the first X-Men. Yep. Film. We had blade and we had X-Men. Yeah, that was it. So Spider-Man comes along and it's brightly colored and he's swinging around and it's got crazy CGI and people love it. And then three years later, the second one comes out and it, which is really more, good. It's it's okay, <laughs> but I the only reason I feel like as many people still love the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, the first two, I should say, as much as they do is nostalgia. If you tried to release those two movies again today alongside the current slate of Marvel stuff, I do not think they would be nearly as popular. Not nearly. They, I mean, they, I, I, they are fun. I say this with someone who... Went to them in the theaters. Mm-hmm. I mean, walked out and has basically never sat down and watched them again. Right. They were enjoyable at the time. And, um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's been pointed out multiple times. And I noticed it when I saw it in the theaters. In the first Spider-Man, just to kind of, to Dave's point, um, there is a close-up after Spider-Man saves Mary Jane uh, during the parade attack from the Green Goblin. It's pretty infamous. She's hugging close to Spider-Man in the shot. And then you can, if it's kind, it's kind of short, but it's just long enough to notice she's hugging a mannequin of mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Oh, and on top of that, uh, this I did not notice until someone pointed it out on the internet. Her hair is blowing the wrong way. Like the direction they're traveling is the opposite way that her hair is being blown. And let's not talk about the fact that they got Willem Dafoe to play Norman Osborn and then put him in that ridiculous outfit. Yes. And something that does date the first one immediately. Uh, Macy Gray is the featured performer at that p- parade. Yes. All right. And so since you brought but it up. But that upside down kiss is still one of the it greatest is. It's iconic. Yes. Ever. They nailed it. And I and feel J.K. Like- and J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. That, uh, yes. Yes. Both of which, the, the upside down kiss, you can attribute to the cinematographer. Yes. And right? J.K. Simmons, you can. Uh, to J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I still maintain that uh, Sam Raimi himself has very little to do with what actually makes those films popular. But let's talk about Drag Me to Hell. Okay. <laughs> but can I. Um, um, no, you can't. <laughs> I. Again, like Michael Bay. Uh, Sam Raimi and his and and his production company Renaissance, um, I think they're great producers. You know, they did the Hercules and Xena TV shows, TV shows, and and with so, the so, national icon Kevin Sorbo. Uh, well, okay, Kevin Sorbo, notwithstanding, uh, and international treasure <laughs> Lucy Lawless. Lucy Lawless is an international treasure. Thank you very much. Um, 
Uh, Can I say that the best thing that Sam Raimi might have given us is both Bruce Campbell and Ted Raimi? That's what I'm saying is that Ted Raimi is great, and <clears throat> as a partner with 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 his brother, um, they make great they make great movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we would go back to popcorn movies. They make great popcorn movies, and they make great popcorn TV shows because that's what and Hercules make, and Xena. And as far as we know, they could shows. just make great popcorn. They could make great popcorn. <laughs> and then, oh, Raimi Brothers and popcorn would be great <laughs> because of those two guys. We get Bruce Campbell, who you know. Is another national only treasure. Did, only did Evil Dead as a favor to Sam and Ted. Right. And Ivan, Ivan Raimi, the third brother. But that's, and he he did it as a favor. He had no, he had no inklings to go into the business at all. He just thought it would be a fun way to spend two weeks of his summer vacation. And it ended up being four weeks and him driving a really bad car. But, uh, and getting covered in and getting blood, covered in and blood and gore every day, and ending up loving it, and then like you were talking about, some people only do it for paycheck. Yeah, Bruce Campbell has no qualms saying, "Oh yeah, I like getting paid for my chin." Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah and he's also been such a. I mean, for the most, I mean, I think now that he's older, he does more refusals of it. But he's like, he's always right. been all in. Is like, you're paying me, okay? Right. Let's, you know, yeah. And, and his his stuff with um, oh my gosh, uh, the series um. Ash versus Evil Dead? Not Ash versus, which is Briscoe County Jr. Nope. Well, Briscoe County's brilliant. No, the spy. Just, the spy. Oh, Jack of all trades? Not Jack of all trades. Burn notice. Burn notice. Oh, Thank Jesus. you. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, you mentioned Hercules and Xena. That was we, a sh- that was a short lived American spy. Right, one. and yes. we we swung wildly from Sam Raimi to Burn. just straight up talking about Bruce Campbell now. Burn notice with Bruce Campbell, and he's a supporting character in that, and he just totally rocks that show. Yeah, it was That's a great it. show. And so Jeffrey if, Donovan and uh, yeah, uh, Jeffrey Donovan's Gabrielle. Great. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, I, for, yeah. I completely forgot her last. Um, Anwar, Gabriel. Uh, First thing so I thought was Anwar. Union. I know that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, but yes, uh, as a production team, and and yes, he probably could have taken more directing classes to improve. You know, but but they came out of theater. They didn't have any film directing classes. They were they were they were theater kids. So I, I, think, I think Sam's Sam Raimi's uh, Sam like I'm his friend. Sam Raimi's <laughs> greatest uh, strength is. Pick is picking great people to cover his weaknesses. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's I, talk about the nightmare that was dragged. <laughs> that, that was funny because I, I just it. that was funny just I grabbed that one out of the ether just to mention. God Almighty! I when that film I've never came seen out, it. I had everyone that I knew who knew that I loved the Evil Dead and mm-hmm. that I loved horror movies and I loved gore and schlock. I had all these people come up and tell me. Oh my God, drag me to hell. It's so great. It's one of the best horror movies of all time. It's the best mm-hmm. horror, recent horror movie. I watched that piece of <laughs> shit and I was legitimately angry. Yeah. Here is a director who cut his teeth in one, on practical effects. And one of the things that made The Evil Dead so famous is its practical effects. 100%. And I am actually friends with one of the special effects artists from the evil dead Two, Tony, Wright. I'm not Tony, right? Tony Elwood. Um, oh, really? yeah, yeah. Tony Elwood was one of the special effects guys on evil dead Two. Um, now we are looking at this dumpster fire of a horror movie that is just so overwrought with bad CGI that I was like, what in God's name happened to Sam Raimi? And that's what led me down the rabbit hole of like, Oh, nothing actually happened to Sam Raimi because he's never been good. And that is what worries me so much that he is now directing the next Dr. Strange film. He's directing Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness. And so many people celebrated when it was announced that he was taking on this franchise, taking it over from, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who directed the first one, but, um, I, I, I am upset and I am worried about the direction of, um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because I don't want to see this film become silly and schlocky and Sam Raimi ish. I don't know. I think Marvel. Scott Derrickson was the director Scott, of Doctor yeah. Strange. Doctor Strange. I, I think Marvel will keep him on a, uh, within a. Con- they'll keep him contained. I think so. God, I hope so because if there if there's a Bruce Campbell cameo and crazy close ups and push ins and bad you know a sophomore at uh, film school level CGI. It's going to infuriate me. Man, and he's going to trash his classic car. Uh, yeah, and he's going to find a reason to put his Oldsmobile in there. <laughs> and uh, Doctor Strange is going to drive it with Scarlet Witch in the past. What about It Follows? 
Did Sam Raimi direct it, Fallen? I think so, yeah, right? No, no, no. no. Uh-uh. He, he's involved I don't think in he's it. involved in that. That could have been a controversial opinion all of it, all in itself because <laughs> Katie and I are literally the only people we know who hated it, Follows. God. No, is, do, do people react to you the same way that you react to me when I say I didn't like Zombievers? What? Wasn't there a... That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, right? Zombie yeah, that. I think awesome. that's how people react. <laughs> that's that's, that's some bullshit. Zombie Look, Reeves. I just didn't like it. I'm allowed to not like things. <laughs> that's good. What was, wasn't there a Sam Raimi film in that uh, It Follows, Scared of the Dark or some? Um, <laughs> but there was like a series of... No, David... David Robert Mitchell. Yeah, oh. thank you. Uh, he wrote and directed that one. And God, I wish he hadn't. Because that's time of my life that I'm never going to get back. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I love it. What a terrible film. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but but it, rem- it reminded me of Sam Raimi's stuff. So it's like, okay. He Maybe directed so. Oz the Great and Powerful in 2013. That's upsetting to me as well. He directed For the Love of the Game. Yeah, I know that. Wow. All right. Anyway, yeah, there's my opinion. Sam Raimi, not a good <laughs> filmmaker. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, I mean, wait, to what western did he do in the '90s? The Quick and the Dead. That's Quick it. and the Dead, yeah. which is really, really great. He did a simple plan. Um, and and he did do simple plan, which is also really, really great. Um, again, all those movies that we just talked about, stocked with great actors. I mean, you got Baby Leonardo, you got Russell Crowe at the beginning of his brilliance, you got um, uh, uh, what's her face, um, Sharon, Sharon Stone. Stone at the height of her mm-hmm. uh, stuff, and Gene Hackman. Um, basically doing what he did in Unforgiven. Um, he didn't, and it was perfect. Uh, You're right. Unforgiven was perfect. Well, well um, his role that he basically did again for Quick and the Dead. And, and in Quick and the Dead, we get bullet time for the first time. So it's like, so I think and it Sam was 1995. Raimi, so I bet it looked impeccable. <laughs> Sam Raimi, <laughs> Sam Raimi, I, I, uh, I will say brought us bullet time that we get, um, perfected in matrix stuff but um uh it, oh is it my turn um, it is what's your next controversial opinion <laughs> um my next one is julie tamer is horrible and should not be representative of anything creative with the exception of making puppets i'll give her that but yes julie tamer is horrible um if you don't know julie tamer uh for the original Lion King stage version, she created the puppets and was director of all the right. an, animal puppetry and stuff like that, um, which got her somehow the ability to direct stuff like uh, Titus. And I'm sorry, I was laughing at your pronunciation <laughs> because you say things like Darkman instead of Darkman, and then you turn around and you say things like Julie Tamer. <laughs> Tamor, Julie Lion Tamer, <laughs> instead of Julie Tamor. Well, didn't she with the stage? <laughs> right. All right. Listen, <laughs> long walk talks is canceled. <laughs> yes, that's two well, I've killed. Well, if it was up to Julie Tamor, me saying this would probably get us canceled. You know, it's like because she believes she has created every brilliant cinematic moment in history, and she only. Oh, steals them. Sorry, I'm so. looking at this. She's also responsible for Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Uh-huh. Right, which I was going to get. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's... That, uh, yeah, you it, keep so preempting us. I don't mean it, to. I no, just... um, I'm glad you did because... Yeah, she gave us that and... Um, I'm really happy that. To be fair, out. didn't Bono? Didn't he also have a part in Bono music? music yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wrote the he wrote the lyrics. Which uh, there's a big old bag of fuck off right there. And not just Bono. Um, uh, the Edge did the. Mm-hmm. Did the so U two in general. You, uh, half of U two. You. The U. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, it was Bono and the Edge, so it's two. I have, <laughs> and, and this isn't a new controversial opinion for me. It's like. You probably oh I know I yeah you've probably known me as long and and it's like I've I've had this since I was in Chicago before that because I was the only one that hated her production of Titus I was the only one that hated um like the only thing that she does good to me is make really awesome puppets I wish I could remember what it was that you watched the the night before you came in and gave me your Julie Taymor thesis the first time I heard was it. Was it? Um, because you were so goddamn mad when you came in and started ranting and raving about <laughs> Julie Taymor. 
Was it across? It's not across. She didn't do across the universe. She did. It, it might have been across the universe or Frida or something. Bullshit. You didn't like across the universe. Across the universe is horrible. <laughs> that probably. Oh, I think you just wow. redlined the audio on yeah. that. Sorry about that, but it is horrible. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hate it. And it wasn't as good as her uh, placement of song usage is just disgustingly bad. Um, and and it's like I think she's a horrible stager. So it's like when she stages and she thinks she's great with her little Siegfried, Siegfried Follies over the head, you know, kaleidoscope dancing bullshit that, you know, cause that she created. It's like, she's just a hack. She is the, she is the exemplar of hack, you know? So it's like, you're talking about how Sam Raimi, um, doesn't direct well. Uh, Michael Bay has ins and outs, you know, this was good, that wasn't so good, but at least they don't put their shit on their actors, they, they can at least allow their actors to put themselves into better positions than they were given by the director, it, because it's like, I will agree with you that Sam Raimi works with great people, so they, they allow themselves, and he allows them to do good stuff. Julie Tamer thinks she's doing the good stuff. And so the actors aren't allowed to do anything to improve upon their stuff that they're given, which is shit. So it's like, I think she is the worst stager. Um, she should never be staging for film, especially because it's so it's compacted and it, you can lose a lot of her badness in a stage production because it's so expansive but when you when you're watching it on a on a screen, things have to be more intimate. And she's a horrible. It's all sizzle and no steak. Horrible. Yes, she's a horrible director of intimacy. Um, it's just you know, and, and she's famous for her love stories. Well, those and big giraffe just, puppets are really hard to maneuver. <laughs> the the giraffes in the original Lion King are great, and and then it's like some of the stuff, the some of the effects for mm -hmm. the Spider Man stage so was was pretty I awesome heard it too. but the thing is and she has him swinging through the yeah through the stage yeah. and so they they have some great wire work but didn't one of the is, performers like break his back or something broken back. several injuries yeah and and because she doesn't work safe i mean the idea it's like i'm i'm not a big you know it's like it should look dangerous but it shouldn't be right dangerous. right right and, but she controlled chaos yes she doesn't control the chaos it's like she, she, she do that because she's not a director she's a puppet maker so it's like that's what you get when you if you want to get when you pedantic anthony about hopkins it. when she gets anthony hopkins and jessica lang and titus she's directing puppets it's like horrible. If you it's want to be horrible. pedantic about it, aren't all directors puppeteers? Oh no, she's just a class. She's like old school Hollywood director, where it's like, you know what? You may die, but the fil the it'll the but the, the show, shot will but, be great. Yeah. But the thing is, she's not even that. She thinks she wants. She thinks she wants to be, and thinks she is. But the thing is, you have William Wyler and you have Frank Capra that may have done that old school. You know, you may die, but it's going to look good. But the thing is, what they've done with characters already you have it's you still have a character driven chaos and 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 it's it, it's not yes i agree with the that as a director you're in a way that you are manipulating in some way your actors to do something but it's not supposed to look like that and be noticeable and i may be the only person that notices her Puppetrack tricks in a, in a show, but um, she's really she's really really bad. She's really 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 bad. And the thing is that she's considered one, top at Shalon. You know, she's considered bigger than better than Catherine Bigelow. And it's no no. Dave, I'd like to yield the remainder of my time, to Stan. So he can <laughs> no, I will not allow that, Chris. Uh, what's your last? Are we on the last opinion? one? Yeah. Okay. I know you have a Star Wars related one uh -huh. coming up. Uh, mine is pretty simple. Um, I think the Star Wars movies should have begun and ended with the first three, and that's it. No extended universe. Nothing else that we've gotten. I know some of it's been really good, but I don't care. I think it should have just been a trilogy. 
Well, listeners, Long Walk Talks is now accepting <laughs> applications for a third co-host on this show. Uh, Chris Barnes was killed on his way back to his home planet. No, I, I don't care. I know. I, I, Chris be, doesn't care. Here's the thing. Chris, Chris Barnes doesn't care. <laughs> here's the, I mean, here's the thing. I think it does a perfect job of telling a story in media res. You're dropped into it. You're right. given the basics, and you're, 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 let, you're let go into the story. It tells that story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does it just like, you know, like the old serials, where it's like, man, you might have missed one, Come, you know, going into the theaters and seeing one before a movie, and then they give you a catch-up, and you get this little arc of the adventure, and then you're out. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I'm not. I'm not a purist by any means. It's just like I just don't think that reminds me. We um we started working with someone who I get they're younger than us. I don't, they, oh yeah, she's sixteen. She, oh, I see. I did not know that until the end of the shift. She's sixteen. Yeah. She she. This I, entire conversation was more upsetting to me than I. Oh let oh yeah on. no, you were quiet. I, I got worried. Um, she she, <laughs> she loves the prequels. She she yeah, hates she, the sequels. She, <sighs> it's weird. It's weird to hear someone say that. Yeah, it's like I I saw the prequels. I, I never hated them with the ferocity that some people did. I just didn't like them. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I haven't. I still haven't seen the third movie in the sequel trilogy. I still haven't seen Rise of Skywalker. Um, they they didn't really light my world on fire either. And it's like, and I and I can't really say that the original trilogy is anywhere like in my top of all time. But it's a great trilogy. Yeah, and I think that there should end i just know that money won't ever let it all right that's fair yeah well once again that was a perfect segue thank you look it's just when george lucas had a team of people who would actually stop his dumber shit right <laughs> and because because it's clear from the prequel and the sequel trilogy that george lucas doesn't know what he's doing and neither do the people who hand it off totally 100 percent know what they're doing well, I don't know what's going to be more controversial, the Sam Raimi thing or this. <laughs> the Last Jedi is the second best Star Wars film after The Empire Strikes Back at me. I will defend that thesis. I I am tired of seeing the hate and the vitriol for The Last Jedi online from Star Wars fans. I loved Solo. So, I'm looks like so you've got well. two openings. It's, it's, it's like... So it's like, oh no, I didn't hate not, Solo either. No, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. love Solo. It's like, so it's not. You're not going to get more flack than I am for, you know. I think Last Jedi is does its job. I think it does better than its job. I think that film it's, was much better than it had any right to be. I agree with that. Um, it's a, it's two towers for me. Yeah, you know? um, it's the second best in the overall Skywalker. Well, it's of the Star Wars films that exist, it's the second best in my opinion, and uh, of the sequel trilogy of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, it's the best of the three. You think... Uh, oh, yeah. See, I'm, I'm still thinking Force Awakens is still... Force Awakens was good, but it was so unoriginal and so paint-by-numbers J.J. Abrams' love letter to Star Wars, which was still enjoyable. I still liked it. Uh, what Ryan Johnson did with The Last Jedi, I thought, was legitimately bold, uh, innovative storytelling for a franchise that at that point already had seven entries. And he gave Rilo Ken... What? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow, you spoonerism, them. You, you the spoonerism that. Is he like, gave oh Kylo Ren a lot more reason to be there. He uh, gave everybody a lot more reason to be you, there. But what I'm saying is, like, we get Adam Driver setting up, and so what we get in Last Jedi is the Kylo Ren that we've been right, that we're ready and ready for and wanting in the in the last one. And the film is not without faults. There are still problems with it, things that I think should have been done differently or just not been done at all. But in terms of overall quality and storytelling. Second to Empire, and, and, you know, the f- and the fights in it. You know, oh yeah, funny to me for talking about bad. the flaws of the movies. Is I think the sequel trilogy has proven just how you can never ever please the Star Wars fan. Base. Oh no, because it, 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 here's literally the progression of complaints I've heard. The, the main complaints I've heard: Force Awakens, that's too much like the original. Mm-hmm. The Last Jedi, 
That's trying too hard to subvert everything. That it's you not know. close enough to the original. It's, it's sub- too different. It's going to. It's trying to t- swerve too often. Rise of Skywalker. Well, this is just too much of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see, and it's like, even if I don't like it when I finally sit down and watch it, I I'm gonna give it a fair shake and be like, well. The and you're right that boggled my mind yeah. when Last Jedi came out because after uh, Force Awakens in 2015 and all the outcry of it's too much uh, it's too much like a New Hope it's yeah. uh, it's not its own film it's just too derivative which in a lot of ways yeah it is but it's still an enjoyable film I still really liked it flash forward two years later the Last Jedi comes out it's too different and I wanted to get a bullhorn and just be like. What do you people want? Which is it? Do you it's, want it to be different or do you the, want it to be and the it's same? The 16 year old, you know, new fanboy. No, not even that. Oh, it's, it's, no, it, there, no. there were these some. Are, this is, these are grown ass. Maybe men that's why, maybe, part. maybe that's why I'm a better, uh, I'm more Trekkie than Star Wars guy because they're less pedantic. The, the Trek, the Trek fandom isn't as horrible as mm. oh. depends depends what rocks you turn over i think because <laughs> because i love the if you die i love too, the abrams star trek right and there and, are and some are hardcore fans hardcore out there hate. who refuse yep. to acknowledge them if you dive deep into any hardcore fandom you're gonna find the unpleasable fan base because uh, i mean it's just all over the board there are people who hate the prequel trilogy but love the sequel trilogy there are people who still blows lo- my mind <laughs> yeah love the prequels hate the sequels who hate both of them who hate who love all of the films all together just the entire star wars franchise i've heard so many people say that if it's a star wars film that they're gonna like it they they enjoy it because it's star wars and it's that universe and being back in that universe and I, among these characters it's like it's like me and the and me and you would Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. It's like, you hate yeah. The Hobbit, but the thing is, I like The Hobbit series because I'm back in that world and I love that world and it's Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and it's like, and it's still his Hobbit, you know? So it's like, I I know as a fan of Lord of the Rings that you hated The Hobbit mm-hmm. and, and why you hate The Hobbit, but more so for me, it's not Lord of the Rings, but it's still, I'm in that world. And Smog is awesome, so. Listen, Peter Jackson made Sir Ian McKellen cry, so. <laughs> the, the thing with, the, with <laughs> franchises like this, I uh, to me at least, is even if I don't like it, they told the story they were going to tell. Mm-hmm. And that's it. It's like, there, it, it is what it is. Crying, you know, saying not saying you count it as canon. You can, you or you, you know, say yeah. I don't. I, that's not part of my Star Wars or whatever. Insert fandom here. It's like no, it happened. That's the story. That's the official canon. The the petition to strike the Last Jedi from canon yeah. was the pettiest bullshit. Like, no. did anyone think that was going to work? That somebody at Lucasfilm was going to be like, well, damn, this petition got five hundred thousand signatures. Guess the Last Jedi isn't canon anymore. Better rush a new Episode Eight into production. No, yeah, fuck no. you. Get off the internet, fanboys. You can be upset and you can go write your own fan fiction about how you would have done it different, mm-hmm. or just or do or do that in depth and an analysis, whatever. But they've told the story they're going to tell. That's it. Yeah. And if you don't like it, fine. Full stop. But that's the story. No. Yeah. And it's and it's conclusive. Yes. The story is conclusive. Yeah. I mean, it's like. They continued the saga, and mm. the, and the saga is awesome, you know. So it's like it's still. <laughs> you just said it two <laughs> different ways within like three words apart. I know. I, know. I messed up the first time. They completed I, I the Sega myself. Genesis. <laughs> they, He's been working on it since the nineties. <laughs> the Sega's, <laughs> the Sega's. Um, but Stan, yeah. why don't you bring us on home with your uh, See, last this controversial is, opinion? This is the one. I don't know if I have a third. Um, I kind of do. Um, You've had a week to think about it, so I hope so. Let's have a preface. Um, My first thing is that it's super contemporary, so I don't know if it counts. Um, uh, The Old Guard, horrible. And I know people think it's the greatest. You're referring to the Shirley's there in Netflix original. Yes, yes. First of all, you got to know Charlize Theron has done this type of stuff better, and she has. 
And you got to realize that this, and she's been in better versions of this movie. And it's like, you do not have to allow yourself to, oh, it's Charlize Theron doing an, doing a, 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 an action movie, an action movie with, with immortalness in it. Um, you just see the, the script is horrible. It takes too long to get to the moments that you need to get to. Um, Are we still in the preface? This is the preface. Um, leading up to the fact that... Uh, you know, it's one imagine so the Star because, Wars crawl in your head. Because <laughs> this might kind of diminish my real controversial thing about... As long as the context is good and thought out and thought-provoking, any subject is viable to be done. Um, so it's our old uh, Serbian film debate. It, 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 uh, that can be included in it, yes. Um, uh, but most of, the, most of that is coming with what's happening recently about cancel culture and stuff like that and how we've been talking about uh, Tarantino stuff and what's uh, specific things in his stuff that is super controversial and maybe questionable at, at this time in, in the world. It's like, as long as the context is good you know because it's gonna um we can get very much to the point of you know of negating shakespeare's contributions because there's a lot of stuff in his stuff that could be seen as cancel culture and it's like let's let's be careful uh, yeah about, i see what you're saying but but as long as but the thing is we also have to realize when we're doing it if we choose something we we have to be ready to be able to discuss those aspects of the piece that we've done and have discussions about the aspects that may be questioned. Mm -hmm. Um, But making sure that we're not, but making sure we're not doing it for the wrong reasons Mm -hmm. and that we're not presenting the controversial issue just because it's a controversial issue, Mm -hmm. that the issue is controversial and we're making a comment about it or, you know, responding to it in kind or um but realizing the context and being true to context because mark twain we you know all the stuff that we're talking about nowadays in tarantino films is can be come right from mark twain stuff so it's like do we go against mark twain do we and i and i talked about this earlier with um faulkner and hemingway it's like Mm -hmm. Those are two very strong, you know, blustery white men. Um, Hemingway mainly. Faulkner was pretty quiet as a person, but his stuff and the people he writes about in his books are heavy. Are heavy, and so it's like we we cannot allow ourselves to dodge the heavy stuff because it's going to be seen as something to be questioned. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to be. So it's it's as long as we're in context and every, anything is viable, but we have to be ready to discuss yeah. the viability of that. The context. content is going to outlive its creator. A- exactly. It's, it's just, just what I said earlier about Roman Polanski. Exactly. Uh, it's Harvey Weinstein. It's, you know, like you said, William Shakespeare. Uh, you can swing a dead cat and hit misogyny and anti-Semitism. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and it's like you when you brought up Plansky is like everything pre Natasha Kinski. It was like, you know, you got repulsion, you got uh, uh, vampire killers, you got, um, you got uh, uh, Rosemary's baby, Mm -hmm. you have the tenant, um, you have all these great movies that, you know, he was seen as like, and then, you know, he reappears again in once upon a time in in Hollywood when we get there. But, uh, um, well, Christ, look at JK Rowling right now, JK Rowling. (laughs) And it's like, I, I had a discussion about this is like, how am I supposed to feel about J.K. Rowling? You know, it's like. Do you enjoy the Harry Potter books? I, I have to. I love the Harry Potter books. Then just like, continue enjoying the and, Harry Potter but books. But the thing is, is like, do I go on to Cursed Child? And do I go on to, you know, do I go to the next um, uh, uh, Beasts movie? You know, and mm-hmm. it's a Fantastic I don't know, Beasts but trying to think about how wizards used to use the bathroom. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, and it's like. There's an ongoing list of people whose Twitter should be taken away. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, and, and, and everything pre me too for Harvey Weinstein, it's like, okay, it's like Kate Winslet 
you know, you did great stuff for him, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, he should have been stopped a long time ago with what he was doing personally, but you can't really, you can't really say that I didn't do great stuff with him. Well, Weinstein was a producer, right? Um, The people that were putting out great work in the films that he produced that was largely the result of the directors of the films that agreed they but were in. he said yes to those things you know we might not have a tarantino yeah we might not have all that miramax stuff and weinstein company stuff before well that. yeah i mean we we flat out wouldn't i mean the, the weinstein company miramax dimension films they're all on the horrible um, atrocious back of Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Right. So was Bob is still considered okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I had uh, an acquaintance of ours um, once told me, uh, if you ever get a chance to meet the Weinsteins, talk to Bob. Talk to Bob. And uh, don't don't engage with Harvey. I was like, okay, cool. I yeah, rem- and, I didn't even I, know what the hell Bob Weinstein looked like. Yeah. I had to go and Google it just in case the opportunity ever presented itself to me and and miramax allowed us to see all i mean miramax gave us sex lies and videotape mm-hmm. which started it gave us kevin smith gave us kevin gave smith us robert rodriguez gave it and started all this stuff so it's like we can't negate the stuff pre mm-hmm. you know so it's like the idea that the context and separating like you said earlier about more women so let's Separating the art from from the man, the artist, or from the artist, you yep. know. Um, uh, and so we got we have to be very careful with ourselves that we don't self censor ourselves as long as we're still in context and that our content is still contextual and still viable as a form of literature. Or. We could just be like Chris and not give a shit and who not made it. Give a shit, <laughs> not care. Chris Barnes doesn't, doesn't care. care. Chris Wilson Barnes just doesn't care. <laughs> so what's the old guard about? <laughs> God damn it! All right. Well, about a hundred and forty minutes of fucking bullshit. Well, from what I was looking at, they've already promised a sequel. So. I know. All right. Well, that is our controversial opinions episode of Long Wonk Tonks. We promised two uh, off-topic episodes after we did two um, back-to-back Tarantino episodes. So um, we'll be back in probably about two weeks with another episode of Long Wonk Tonks before we jump into our uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 discussion later in August. Uh, Chris, what's the um, what's the WWE pay-per-view that's coming up this month? Oh, God. Um yeah, don't worry about it. No, no. Wrestling fans will know, probably know what it is. I'm supposed to be a wrestling fan. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, and I know that there's supposed to be an NXT TakeOver pay-per-view uh, sometime in August. So it looks like we'll be getting um, a couple more wrestling-related pay-per-views, uh, podcasts coming out in August. Can you guys believe it's already August? SummerSlam. Oh, my God. I forgot one of the big four. SummerSlam. <laughs> All right, so you can look forward to the SummerSlam episode. Oh, What's the date right. on that? Are doing SummerSlam without, without a, without an audience? Yeah, that's going to be the poor performance center. They're st- they're do- they're they're all they're all at the performance center for the time being. And uh, oh, I forgot. Um, they added a pay per view a week after SummerSlam on August thirtieth. Uh, there's August- two pay per views in yeah, August. There's August twenty third SummerSlam, August thirtieth Payback. Oh God! And then there's actually two. There's and then there's going to be a takeover uh, on August twenty second. All right. Well, so you can look forward to two episodes of This Is a Work and one episode of This Is a Takeover coming up in August, and uh, along with uh, two more episodes of Long Walk Talks. So as always, Chris and Stan, thank you for being a part of this episode with me. I appreciate it. If you enjoy the show, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. And thanks to Chris, we now have a Twitter account. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can follow at Long Walk Podcast. There's my controversy. So we're on Twitter now. Sucks. Social media (laughs) is the worst. No, it's not. But social media is the worst. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope to be back in a couple of weeks. And always remember that. And always remember that thing you like sucks.